Color grading looks impossible when you first open DaVinci Resolve. There's so many scopes, nodes, buttons, it's easy to get overwhelmed. Maybe you've even tried dropping a LUT on your footage and wondering, why does it look worse? In this video, I'll show you the simple workflow that actually works. First, we'll do a quick tour of the color page, how to read the scopes, how to set up nodes, add a LUT the right way, and then fix exposure, contrast, and saturation. By the end, you'll know how to turn flat footage into something that finally looks cinematic. But honestly, I'm tired of seeing this gray, washed out looking footage. So let's jump to the color page and do some coloring. So we're going to go down to the bottom and click the color page. And now it opens up right here. In your color page, you have a number of panels. So just like the edit page, you have a viewer. That's where you can see the clips that you're working with. In this bottom left corner, you have your primaries. So primaries right here. We're looking at the color wheels. Now, the next thing is your curves. And then this last frame over here, uh, we have keyframes if you need that, or you have scopes. So scopes, uh, if you remember the video on histogram, scopes are very similar, like cousins to the histogram. And some of them even have a form of a histogram in them. I think there's even a histogram right here, right? So it's a slightly different looking. It's separated into the red, green, and blue channels. But this is a histogram showing you what the darkest parts of the image are, what the lightest parts of the image are. Now, if you go to this one, the waveform, this one shows you the same thing, but it's top down. So the bottom is completely black and the top is completely white. And it shows you the individual colors and where they sit in the image. So let's go back to the top of our window and click on nodes. So nodes, this one here that's selected in red, this is a node. Now a node is a way for you to make an adjustment in on your image. It's good to separate your adjustments by different nodes. So that way, if you need to make changes, you can always know where to find them. The first thing we're going to do is add a new node. So we already have node one here, but if you right click, you go to add node, then you click add serial. And now we have two nodes. Now the way nodes work is the image that we have comes out of this green dot and it moves along this path into the first node. Then that node does whatever it wants to do to the image and the resulting image comes out of this uh, green square through the green triangle into the second node. Now the second node does what it has to do to the image and then that comes out of the green square over to this green circle again. And that's what we end up seeing. So the first thing we're gonna do is grab the second node. So node number two, we're gonna right click and go to LUT. Then remember we dropped our LUT into the DJI folder. So I'm going into the DJI folder and I'm going to select DJI DCineleg to Rec 709. And boom, look at that. That looks great. We're done. <laughs> so now this LUT has basically said, here's the math I did on the image, the gray washed out looking image. And this is what your camera actually saw. Hey, if, if this looks good to you, feel free to move on, All right? But we're gonna do this for each of the clips so that we can see what we're working with. And at first it'll look great, but then when your eye gets trained a little bit, you'll start to see, oh, we can make some adjustments and make it a little bit better. So we're trying to see where our clips are, but we turned off our clips. So if you come back to the top left, you can click clips and that there we have the five of them. So let's do the same thing with this next one.
Great. So now we have all of our clips with the LUT applied. Now, if you go back to this first one, you'll see that it's black. Just remember, that's because we did a fade in. So the clip doesn't really show up until a few seconds into it. So taking a look at our scopes, you can see we have a pretty good balanced image here. We have a lot of details, a lot of colors, and they're fitting. Nothing's hitting the ground of the, of the waveform. And we do have something hitting the top. Now you see how this top line has some white here, but if you come over to this side, there's no white. That's because on this side of the image, so these are these go from left to right. So anything on the left side of the image is over here. Anything on the right side of the image is over here. So there's no bright spots on the right side of the image. That's why the line isn't white over here, but we do have bright spots here and that that's when it's being clipped. So if you look at the sand, it's it's being clipped. It's starting to go into that danger zone where it's almost becoming pure white. So we don't want that. We want to protect our sand. So we're going to go back to node one. And we'll try a couple different things and see which one works best. So we know the, the whole image is sitting in this range. So that's nice. But let's see. What happens if we move the offset down? So we're going to move our offset down until we slew right about here. We stop having the clipping at the top. So the image still looks pretty decent. We start to go down and start to touch this line, maybe in the, the shadowy area here. But overall, it's not too bad. Let's reset and try a slightly different one. So this one is called gain, and this is responsible for controlling the highlights of the image or the brightest parts of the image. So if we turn this dial down on the gain, you can see that instead of moving the entire image, it kind of just brings the top part down more than anything else. See, even the bottom here doesn't really move that much. So if we move the gain down, we've achieved a slightly nicer effect. Now to see the difference between what you just did and what it was before, you can click on the number of the node. So if you click the number, that's what it was before. You see how the nodes grayed out. If you click it again, that's where it is after. So we've lowered the brightness of the, the top part of the image and we've gotten it back on the control. So now our sand isn't completely white. Let's jump over to the next one. Let's move on to the next one. So this one is clearly darker. You can see at the bottom of the, the scope, we're touching, we're hitting the bottom. So let's grab the offset and pull the whole thing up. And we're watching the scopes and we're just, just having some of the fringes below that line. But now if we compare from this, to this, that's a better spot than if we turn this node off, this to this. You can tell, All right? So let's turn that back on. We like that so far. So we're working through these clips, just trying to get them all to be around the same brightness level, kind of look like it's one continuous scene. So let's go back to the beginning. Let's jump to the middle of this clip here. So now look at the colors in this. Look at the colors. Look at the difference in the brightness as well. We have this really bright sand and this really dark area. Not really, really dark, but darkish area. Let's see if we can make this look more aesthetically pleasing. So there's two controls in your primaries. One is the contrast here, and the other one is your saturation down here. Now in your contrast, what it does, it separates the bright ones, the bright parts of the image from the dark ones. So if we click on the box and drag to the right, we're adding contrast. Now we can add way too much contrast like that, 
Or if we go the opposite direction, we can take away contrast until it turns completely gray. So we want something that looks nice. So in order to reset a tool, almost every tool resets by double clicking on the name. So this is where we started. Let's add a little bit of contrast to the image. And you want to go a little bit too much and then bring it back. Just bring it until it feels natural. I think right about there is good. All right. We've introduced a little bit of that clip in, but that's okay. We'll work with this. But now we have some, some difference between the, the middle pieces of the image where dark things are darkened, things that would have been brighter are brighter. Now let's go down to the saturation. It's currently at 50. Now the same principle, you can go way too much and have it kind of look fake. And you can go all the way till you get black and white. So once again, double click the saturation to reset it. Let's see if you can just add a smidge if we need to. Maybe just about that. That's nice. All of this, you want to be tasteful. Right. So we'll live with that for now. Let's jump over to the next clip. Now let's take a look at it from the beginning. And what we're looking for is we want to make sure that there's no crazy jumps between the different colors in the image where one image is very saturated and then the next one isn't or one image is very contrasting and the next one isn't. We want to feel like this was the exact same point in time, even though these clips were shot maybe within um, an hour apart of each other or more. So let's play it from the beginning. That's pretty sweet. All right, so we're gonna call it here. Color grading does not, like you can do too much or you can do just enough. We're gonna do just enough. So we like that. Ready for your videos to sound as good as they look? The next video shows the process to create an immersive audio experience. If you want the full step-by-step -step process from start to finish, where I explain my thought process in more detail, I explain some of the tools, then check out the longer version of this video. The link is in the description.